Thank you for joining us and thank you for watching Sexy Nails. I'm Alexandra Mitchell. I'm the Programming Manager at Series Fest. And I'm joined here with Tom Slater, who's the creator, writer, director of Sexy Nails. And Tom, if you want to introduce your actors. Sure. Um, we've got Jacob Warner, who plays Sam. G'day, and g'day, Thomas, g'day, g'day. Thomas Larkin, who plays Luca. Hi there. Thank you for joining us. Um, my first question, pretty simple. What was the inspiration for this project? Um, I actually started going to the nail salon near my house with my best mate and getting uh, our nails done. And then, yeah, um, we uh, sat there and, and um, as we were waiting for the nail paint to dry, we were sitting in front of a mirror and um, just started telling jokes and trying to make each other laugh. And then started talking about stuff and then started talking about real stuff. So um, I think that day I walked home and wrote the first episode in like 20 minutes. This kind of happened. Wow. And then Tom and yeah. Jacob, how'd you all get involved with the project? Um, uh, for me, uh, Tom, Tom contacted, do you know what? Actually, Tom had cast... Um, uh, Kate um, to play uh, Tilly and me and Kate knew each other and I'm I'm pretty sure Kate maybe brought me up to Tom um, and then Tom had realized he'd seen me in something as well and uh, we met up in Brisbane when I was doing a show he sent me all the scripts and um, it was the funniest thing I'd read like I, I'm a big fan of like American sitcom and, and the structure of comedy and that sort of thing. And I hadn't read anything um, or seen anything in Australia that uh, made me laugh the same way um, as those really tight comedies from the US. And I was just like, oh, I have to do it. I mean, I didn't know Tom at all. And so when we met, it was like, it was like our first kind of date and it went really well. We had a beer and um, we got along famously and found that we had all the same references and all of the same uh influences and it just kind of I was like yeah let's do it let's do it yeah we just started I think we talked about Steve Carell in the office for like an hour and a half <laughs> yeah 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 and how yeah, it was the, the best performance that anyone's ever given <laughs> yeah <that was> it. <laughs> yeah I, I can confirm actually it's it's fascinating watching these two uh work together it, it's it, in many ways it's like peas in a pod it, you can't separate them it's um it, it's interesting because i have i have the opposite story in, this, in that sense i've known tom uh for a very long time and um uh tom reached out a couple of years ago with um the project in uh, i think at some point early on uh, an early iteration of the script and the one thing that struck me other than the, the, the storyline itself was the way how um vivid the world seemed uh, in tom's imagination and even just listening and having some preliminary chats about the project um I, I, I just was so excited and w wanted to do anything to be a part of it, really. So that was the beginning of the, the discussion. Mm. Great. And uh, Tom, you said that it started off with a conversation at uh, a nail shop. I'd love to know a little bit about the dialogue and how much of the dialogue changed from that first script that you wrote through production to what we see on screen. Lots, lots, yeah. Um... A lot of the stories in the, or a lot of the conversations and stories in the show started from a, an idea of a real thing that happened or I heard a, you know, stole a story off a friend or something. But um, I get really um, the perfectionist about the rhythm and the dialogue. And so like constantly refining it, refining it. And then as we were rehearsing it, we were refining it. And um, in the edit, cut out as much dead air as possible. So yeah, at every stage, it, it changed a lot. And I think like for me, um, what, I think you can hear this and see this in the show. This is not a, uh, in any way a, a comedy piece that requires or had any improvisation. Like it is a, it's a written comedy. It, and, mm -hmm. and I think that that's important. Like Tom has cr crafted it like and refined it. It's, it's not, there wasn't space and didn't need any, F, like anything from me and Tom to make, to make it work. It, it, it arrived to us. Like we had a read through and Tom adjusted some things after he'd heard it out loud from us, but it's, um, it's a well-written piece. We just had to get out of the way of it. 
Mm. I think that's vastly understanding what you guys did with it, but thank you. <laughs> well, no, no, we man. used to we used to joke on set. We're like, if this is good, if this works, we'll say it was written. But if this if this is terrible, we all agree this was improvised, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the deal. That was this the is deal. on you. Yeah. <laughs> The dialogue is definitely, it's very snappy, um, but it provides a lot of information. I think you all talked a little bit about the world that you created, Tom. I mean, it's two men talking um, and doing a pretty simple action, um, but they're giving context to their lives or giving context to a whole world. I love to know a little bit more about how you really kind of centered in on that dialogue, but also made sure that the action, the visual actions that were happening on screen had as much weight to the dialogue? That's a good question. I, when I'm writing, I hate writing stage direction. Um, these boys will know that. I try and write as little of it as possible. So anything that's action that's happening that grounds the dialogue, it's performance, it's these guys. We, we tried things in rehearsal, um, but on the shoot day we had we shot this whole thing in four days. And so um, most days these boys were getting through about 20 pages of dialogue in a 10 hour shoot. So any, um, any performance stuff that you liked, any action that works is, is born out of exhaustion or of <laughs> spur of the moment, a reaction to the text maybe. That's what, they, what do you guys think? I, 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 yeah. I completely agree with that. What do you reckon, Jake? I reckon um, there's something about that um jump in and and swim as fast as you can and just listen and play uh without the <clears throat> reverence uh reverence of having too much time to actually think or deliberate which i think um initially uh well i think is really liberating actually you know at the end of the day you just, mm. you, all, all you've got is that other human uh or humans that you're bouncing off and um and and like jacob said in in many ways a, a lot of the you know, if there was ever a, a hiccup, usually you go back and sure enough, um, there'd be something that you you were missing in the script. It was actually really clean in that sense, a very little fact, mm. Um, mm. which was fun. But I also think like in terms of like what, what you see um, in terms of a, a, as a visual piece, Tom and his team created a really a beautiful piece like I think that was kind of one of the things Tom was looking at is to to make it really beautiful in terms of the color palette and like scouting that location I know they went to a mil like every nail shop in Sydney because it because he knew he was going to be locking off the frame and it was mostly going to be in that two shot it the frame needed to be beautiful mm. because you're right it's it's very dialogue heavy so you've, you've got just two guys sitting there and talking. I think he's made, him and his team have just made that frame just really, really beautiful, which I think like at least it adds so, so, so much to what could have been a much simpler, much um, kind of duller um, shoot, I think. I think what also helped was because the like all of the plot and all of the action really is like little character moments between the boys. We actually spent a lot of time rehearsing and that relationship that Tom and Jacob built together, I think comes through in all their little gestures and like there are moments when Jacob sort of like puts his head on Tom's shoulder or where they're kind of leaning on each other. That just was born out of the fact that by the time we shot, they were friends. Um, mm. And by the time we wrapped, they were enemies. <laughs> 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 it was a journey yeah 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 it was it was a journey yeah <laughs> Jacob you used the word vibrant which is one of the best descriptive words for sexy nails in both the pacing but also in the colors I'd love to mm -hmm. know a little bit of how the colors informed your performances and Tom how the colors mm -hmm. informed the final product that we see Oh, in terms of performances, that's <laughs> that's a great question. I think that like you're right, it must have had an effect, and I think it does because I think yeah, it's the vibrancy, the world that we were in. It's um, yeah, it adds a lightness and a brightness to the to the vibe of the room. So of course, it's gonna it's gonna influence. But Tom, Tom also yeah. talks 
um, don't you reckon, Jacob? Tom would talk a lot in colors and textures as well as a director. And that, yeah. I don't know, like, you know, obviously everyone has their own way in, but um, I've never worked with a director who's been that um, specific uh, with nailing a feeling by describing the, the kind of color of cobalt or, you know, or, 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 yeah. or in this case, moss green. And I guess because, yeah. you know, we are in a now salon after all, it was this sort of remarkable language we kind of created led by Tom based on the zany colors that were in the space. I thought that was really interesting um, and effective. Mm. We yeah. also talked a lot about um, performance. Uh, we, we kept talking about being on voice which was performing this as if it's a bit bigger than life, as opposed to like a lot of Australian comedy often will, will go for naturalism. And so it's, it's very dry and it's sort of underplayed. And we wanted to kind of go the other way because it's so colorful. And also because a lot of the shows we love um, are kind of like, you know, American comedies that do sort of kitch it up. And I think in that space of more exaggerated performance and visuals, um, sometimes the emotion can come through a bit more strongly. Yeah, I think what you're talking about with that on voice kind of thing, I think um, there's a tendency for actors to want to be um, cool. And I think that is a kind of an Australian thing as well, just to kind of like whisper it and just be a little bit off voice, just be like doing all the comedy like this. Mm. And it just doesn't um, energetically, I think it doesn't work for comedy. And like mm. naturally, I think me and Tom, um, when we're on set, would lean towards that kind of whispery cool thing because you're just so used to doing it on set. Mm. And um, but we'd spoken about it and Tom would remind us, geez, like make sure you're on voice with this because it just energetically gets you off yourself onto the mm. other person and um and there's more of a um an attack on it, which I think comedy requires. And I think we miss it in Australia a lot because of our possibly laid back trying to be cool vibe. Um, mm. So we stole that from the Americans a bit, I think. We did. So thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> No, thank you all. <laughs> thank you for sharing Tracy Nails with us uh, and for sitting down and chatting with me today. Thanks. Of course. Thank you very much. Well,